Hi guys and welcome. I'm very excited because today I have find out about the contest is called the Advent Challenge. And this is a set of challenges destined to RPA developers. We currently it's at the number five. Now what you win after you resolve this? Well, not much. There are just points on the UiPath forum and a reputation there. Now I don't want to stay a bit here into the intro. Let's go straight to the problem. Jingle Bell, the assistant of Santa, hasn't heard about version control. And by the way, you should use the version control. And if you don't know how to use it, I'm gonna prepare a video and show you the benefits. And made a terrible mistake. Initially, Santa kept all the kids' name wishes in the Excel sheet. However, Jingle Bell suddenly started to make a new version of it, and now it's a mess. Santa Incorporation doesn't have resources to deliver twice the same kit, neither can his professional understanding. We do have a files attached, a zipper hive. So you have two options to resolve this challenge. If you're advanced, then you need to make a workflow that compares two attached Excel files and make a new version where duplicates are removed and the unique names merge afterwards. If you're a beginner, you need to build a workflow that read the creation date of both files and delete the latest created one. And you have here a hint. So we are back to UiPath Studio and let's have a look here. We do have under the data kids wishes A and B, the two files and actually let's have a look. I'm gonna open both of them. So this is the kid wishes A and the second one is kid wishes B. And the structure is the same. Both files have two columns, it's named kid and a wish. And the first one has six row and the second one has six rows also. So basically we need to create a single result with maybe there should be seven or eight. It's really depending about the kid's name. I need to find an activity in order to do that. The first one, I'm gonna need to read the data from the both files. And I will use the read range activity from the workbook. This one doesn't need Excel files to be installed. Now the workbook path, I'm gonna just hit browse and go to the data and kid wishes A. And let's say read range A. And basically I'm just gonna copy and paste read range B and modify the file here as a B. Now also this sheet name, it's called Christmas. And I'm just gonna copy paste from here modify under the sheet name for both files and what I need to do is to delete this range to an empty string because I would like to read the whole file, the whole range. So this contains the header so this one is needs to be checked and the output I would like to have in a data table. So I'm here on the read range A, I'm gonna right click and define a data table, it's called data table 1. Do the same for the data table too. And what I'll put here, actually I'm gonna fix this error. And then I need to merge these two. Now before to do that, I'm gonna go here in the activities and write data table. And let's have a look to the activities that they work with data table. So add data column, we don't need, add data row, maybe we need that. But first let's try to filter, to find something which filters. Well, filter data table, it takes from a data table and it returns another set of rows. So it's not something which we we'll would like to have. For each row, that would be an option that I would resolve this question. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the for each row. So let's take this approach. The way how I would like to resolve is to have this data table here and take the first one and go through all of the rows from the data table one and I'm gonna check if this row exists in this data table too. If not, I'm gonna add in the data table too. So the result, the end result, it should be in the data table too. Of course, you can take the other way around. You can start with the for each in the data table one and have the result in the data table one. It's really up to you. So let's start with this approach. Uh, and I think one activity which we need is to search in the data table. Well. For that, I'm gonna tell you it's the lookup data table. And we need to check if this row has been found. Well, how do I know that? We need to use an if activity. So if something, then we need to add a data row. I'm gonna see what we're gonna put here in the conditions. So let's go to the for each row. Are we gonna start with data table one or data table two? 
let's say we're gonna start with the data table one. So that's the source. And then I'm going to have a look in the data table two. So look up data table set in the input data table two. The lookup value, it's the one from the current row. So that's row. I'm gonna open in parentheses and then I need to specify the column name. Well, I'm gonna search using the kid name and remember that the column is named kid. And this, it specify a string. So the lookup value is as a string. The row, it returns an object and we need to convert an object to a string if we're gonna call the toString method. Now, the source of information is called the lookup column. So let's set the properties that are needed in order to exist this lookup. So all we need to do is to set the column name. We don't need to specify the column index or the column actual column. I'm gonna specify this, the column name is kid from the data table two. And then as a result, we can have specify two things, the cell value or the row index. Well, in this case, I'm gonna consider the row index. I'm not interested to see the actual value. So that's why I would prefer to use index. Create a variable and let's name it row index. Now this value, it's greater or equal than zero if a row has been found in the data table too. So index starts from zero inclusive and exclusive inclusive the length of the rows. Now, because we know about the row index, let's see what we're gonna say in this if. So we are looking to put a condition that doesn't exist the row in the data table too. So we know that if the row index is smaller than zero, then we need to add a data row. So the data row should be in the data table two. So we are searching all the time in the data table two, but we are adding in the same data table two again. So I'm gonna specify the destination that is data table two, that's our result. And then I have two options to specify the input. Basically, I need to use this row, which is the source from the data table one, and I need to specify here. Now, it's not possible that a single data row to exist in two data tables. And how you do that, there is a trick. We're gonna use the input array, the array row. Now, I need to convert from a row, a data table row to an array of objects. So I'm gonna access row that input array or item array. As you can see, it's an array of objects. It's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna hit save and collapse the body and the if. And what I need to do is to write this using a right range. So at the end, after the for each has been done, I'm gonna say right range. And I'm gonna select the first one, which is a file workbook. The result, it should be in output, output.xls6. And let's fix this typo. And the sheet name, it's Christmas. And the data table, we're gonna specify the data table too. That's our end result. Now, if I'm gonna hit run, well, before to do that, I need to specify to the right range. Uh, I'm gonna add the headers and let's check the read range. Has the add headers checked? It means that we're gonna work with the Excel files, which has the first row as a header. So I'm gonna check that. I don't want to specify any password. So let's run the file. Actually, this is a zipper hive, which I have just used to extract. The workbook doesn't exist. So read range B, I think maybe we have a typo. So let's check, it runs from the data table one. Oh, doesn't exist the file. So that's not the C, that's a B. Okay, uh, because it's used by another process. That's another error because we have the Excel file open here. So I'm just gonna close it and run again. I hope we are lucky this time. Great. If you go to the project, I hit refresh. I have an output that Excel is file. Double check. So checking this output file, we see that the first it's a column name, exactly what we're looking for. And the rest of them, there are not six rows anymore, but 
there are nine rows. I'm gonna close and that should be the first option how I would resolve this challenge. Now, let's have a look to the second option. Now, I'm gonna go here and hit rename and say advance one. So, now I would like to copy and paste and show you another approach how you would resolve this type of challenge. I don't want to waste your time with the read range and things like that. I'm just gonna go and hit set as main, right click and rename and let's say advanced two. So double click on the advanced two. So the read and the write definitely remains. What I need to work is with this for each row. So go here in the activities I could use another activity which is called join data tables, which is exactly what we want. However, if we're gonna use this join, the result data table, it will not have just two columns, it will have three. Then after we have joined the tables, we need to delete manually those rows. So it's not exactly what we are looking for. Join data table, it's a very good approach for in-memory data tables, which is not what we are doing here. So look up, we have already did, and let's hit with merge. I'm gonna drag and drop. Let's try to merge data table and I'm gonna delete this for each. So from the merge data table, I would like to merge these two. The destination, let's keep the same, the data table two. The source, it will be data table one. And let's try to run and see what's the actual result. Go here in the project, double click on the output and it seems that we don't have nine, we have 11. So let's double check what the merge did. So as we see this Lydia kid name, it's added twice. So we would like ideally to remove the duplicated rows after we have merged this. So let's try to see if there is this activity. And I think there is remove duplicated rows and we need to go and don't hit save. And remove duplicated rows doesn't need any parameters. Uh, we can set an output the data table two, and the input should be the data table two. And let's go run it. Okay, so we have nine rows here. Now, as a last step, I would like to do a rename. So let's hit the output two for the advanced two and output one for the advanced one. And let's give it a run again and let's make a comparison between these two files to make sure that they are exactly the same. Let's hit a run for this. Okay, we have the output one and output two. There's the kid and the rows are exactly the same. Great. Now, what's the best method that I would recommend? Well, I would highly recommend the one which contains less code. So if I would go to resolve this challenge, by default, I would consider this the second version. Guys, what do you think about this challenge? If you want to see more content like this, or if you want to talk about something else, use the YouTube comment and I'm gonna try to tackle in the next video. That was for today, see you next time.